Hi, and welcome to the show where we share the stories of the many who intersect with our healthcare system, but are rarely heard from. My name is Kevin Poe, founder and editor of Kevin MD. Today on the show, we have Michelle Dang. She's an integrative pain management physician, and she's a podcaster at the Wish Well podcast. She wrote the Kevin MD article a few years ago, The Painfully Fine Line of Pain Management. Michelle, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Kevin. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Good. And we'll get into your article in a bit. But first off, tell me your story and your journey to where you are today. Awesome. So um, as Kevin, as you mentioned, I am an integrative pain management physician. Um, so I kind of developed that term integrative pain management myself, actually. Um, I, my background is I am anesthesiologist and pain management physician. I did my fellowship training in Texas. I was born and raised in Texas. And after I, I was in practice for a couple of years, I struggled with trying to find other ways to help my patients. And so from there, I discovered the field of integrative medicine. So I did complete a two-year fellowship with Dr. Andrew Weil out of the University of Arizona. So that was integrative medicine fellowship. So I combined integrative medicine alongside with my interventional pain management training. And so I started uh, maybe a few years ago talking more about integrative medicine, how we can incorporate it into interventional pain management. And so started my personal website. And uh, for me, I do a lot of just speaking about it, I post about it, I write about it. Um, so I'm hoping to do a little bit more in, in the field of integrative pain management. So how exactly does integrative pain management differ from, say, standard pain management? So integrative medicine in general is a combination of traditional as well as alternative techniques to help manage overall uh, well-being. So it could be things like nutrition changes, um, nutrition and diet changes, as well as movement therapy, which is sort of why I fell in love with the field of integrative medicine, because I'm a big believer in movement therapy. I am a yoga instructor and Legree fitness instructor. So um, I know that's helped me personally with chronic pain or dealing with chronic pain or pain issues that come up. And so that's kind of, um, you know, how, how integrative medicine can be utilized in daily life and to make lifestyle changes. And how has the pandemic affected you and your practice over the last few months? Oh, gosh, thank you for asking. Um, I live in Houston, so right now things are a little bit crazy. Um, and I had to shift my practice to the first two months when the pandemic started to telemedicine. I stopped all of my elective procedures. And so with pain management, I do a lot of injections, and those are all considered elective. So we stopped that for the first two months. And as restrictions eased up, I started back seeing patients um, again and starting procedures again. But now with the surge, uh, second surge that's happening, we're starting to kind of slow down a little bit. So it's been pretty stressful and it personally has been really difficult uh, for me just to kind of maintain my personal health and, and wellness and fitness since I'm pretty active. I go to a lot of studios to work out. So I've stopped doing that the last couple of months. And so that's been really challenging for me. Sure. But let's move on to your Kevin MD article, and you wrote that a few years ago. But I still think a lot of the things that you write that you wrote about are still relevant today. So, can you summarize this article and why you decided to write it? So, I wrote that probably about four years ago. Um, I was in a private practice at that time. It was a solo practice, and I wrote the article about two different patients that I had seen. One was a patient with cancer who ended up passing away, and she did not want any pain medications at all. In fact, myself and her daughter had to convince her to take pain medications to help with her pain. And then uh, the dichotomy of that was I saw another patient who had knee pain, and I talked to her about integrative medicine techniques to help with it, and all that she wanted at that time was pain medication. And so um, it, was, it was a time, during that time, I was pretty burnt out, I think, in the field of chronic pain management, although I had already completed my integrative medicine fellowship, I still struggled with kind of incorporating that into my practice. And so I, my goal in writing that article was just to bring to the audience like an awareness of the challenges um, that we face, not only me as a specialist in, in pain management, but just, you know, general practitioners also deal with patients with chronic pain, and it can be very challenging. And I know that that particular article, it was hard for me reading all the comments because some of the comments I did take it a little bit personally, like, you know, I feel like I'm a very compassionate and empathetic physician. And sometimes 
I forget that, that that is who I am. And when you have patients who are frustrated with dealing with chronic pain and um, they don't know how to deal with it and they you know, may on some level project to you um, as a physician, it's, it's hard for me to remember that. And so I think I just, uh, my goal is just to, to let people be aware that this is a challenge. The opioid epidemic is continuing to be a challenge and there are other ways to manage it. And, and it doesn't make me a bad physician or other people a bad physicians if they're not able to really help that particular patient who may be kind of really wanting one specific thing for their pain. I think you summarized that nicely. I'm an internal medicine primary care doctor and chronic pain is one of the most difficult issues that we face almost on a daily basis. Now, if you're thinking about opioids um, for chronic pain, what are some of the factors that go into your decision-making process? For me personally, I, I honestly don't prescribe opioids that much. I usually will tell them that there is a place for it. Typically, I will be all for prescribing opioids if a patient has cancer pain. I mean, that is one of the, one of the conditions in which I really don't have a problem with prescribing narcotics. Um, however, if they are dealing with a specific condition, I tell them, and they, they would like narcotics, I tell them, why don't we try other things? And if you need medications for breakthrough pain, then by all means, we can talk about that. But until I know that they're putting in some effort, and that's kind of the thing that I talk to all my patients about when it comes to chronic pain is that, you know, for you to get better, you're going to have to put in some effort, whether it is to do some physical therapy or chiropractic care or walking. I mean, you just have to show me that you, because it kind of goes both ways, you know, medications are not the end all be all. And I think that is something that requires a lot of educating for the patient. And uh, when you talk to patients um, about that, in general, what have ha- what has the reaction been? Um, so it really depends on the person, right? I mean, it depends on, on how much they're willing to accept the part that they play in whatever condition it is. And um, so if they're morbidly obese, you know, if they have a BMI of 45, you know, obviously there's a lot that goes into that and pain is one part of it. And so um, it just depends on where they are mentally. Some patients are willing to to make that next step and some patients are not. And um, it's something that I've learned. I've been in practice for nine years, eight, nine years that I can't help them all, you know? And so if they're willing to help to meet me somewhere halfway, then we can have that conversation. And um, it's not to say that I'm, I'm not against uh, prescribing opioids at all, but I'm willing to, I, I want them to be willing to have that discussion with me on how we can help them. Now you wrote your Kevin MD article three to four years ago. Has anything changed in that, those intervening years? Yes. Yeah, so that was, I was in a solo practice at that time. Um, I left that practice a couple of years ago. So now I'm in an orthopedic practice. So it's a very different practice. I've been in all, pretty much all of the practice models there can be. Um, so my current practice is an orthopedic practice. And so um, I get a lot of referrals for specifically for injections, so interventions. Uh-huh. And so from that standpoint, it has it has helped just my overall mental well-being um, in the sense of, you know, I have patients who come to me for specific issues, for specific interventions, and I'm able to, you know, talk to them more about integrative medicine techniques that they can utilize. And so I don't have, um, I have maybe 5% of my patients on medications. The rest just get the injections and then they either get better or they don't and they have surgery and they have physical therapy. So it's just a different model. So I'm in a, I think overall a better place. Sure. And one of the things that we face in primary care is really a lack of pain management specialists. And that's especially true in my area. So what kind of tips can you share with your primary care colleagues when it comes to managing chronic pain? Great question. And that's something that I still struggle with. I think um, I'm, I'm trying to talk to more primary care physicians out there because what I find is, and I'm just general, generalizing, many primary care physicians will refer to neurosurgery or orthopedic spine. And they don't, they, I don't know if they forget that, <laughs> that we're, we're available and we're not just about medications. What I find is many times I'll get referrals from uh, general practitioners for medication management. And then the same, the same patient would be referred to my spine surgeon partner for back pain when they could just send it to me, you know? So I think that there, 
I feel overall that we are a little bit underutilized in the appropriate way. So I think, you know, if a patient has back pain, I think the first thing that many, um, many general practitioners can ask is, are you interested in surgery? Because if you're not, then you can see a pain an interventional pain specialist and they can work you up and get imaging and physical therapy. And, and there's a lot that we can do outside of just medications and outside of even just injections. But um, what I find is a lot of times patients get referred to a spine surgeon um, and that patient comes to me after, have our, after already having to wait months to see my spine surgeon partner. And then at the end of the day, you know, the patient doesn't want surgery and then has to wait to see me. And so then that's months down the road before the patient can get any type of interventions or any type of, of therapy. And so, you know, it, it's a frustrating system, I think, for, for some of my patients as well, because they feel like they've gone to literally every single specialist. And sometimes they're even sent to rheumatology before they're even sent to, sent to a pain specialist. So, I mean, I think... Um, if a, pain, if a patient does have some issues with some type of pain, we are well equipped as pain specialists to work the patients up. And if the patient needs surgery, we'll know what to look for, you know, and, and we will send the patients to appropriate specialists at that point. Hey, thank you so much for sharing that. I'm always looking for tips when it comes to managing chronic pain because it is such a challenging issue. Sure. Now, can you share something that you know now that you wish you knew five to six years ago? Um, I think right now there is so many special, there are so many specialties out there that were not really readily available or people didn't really know about it before. So, you know, integrative medicine, I basically had to do a search to find the fellowship. There's functional medicine, there's lifestyle medicine, there's culinary medicine. I mean, there's all these different types of specialties that I personally was not aware of even five or six years ago. And the only way I really found out about it was Googling. Mm -hmm. So I think that there, like nowadays, I think there really is a shift. People do want to get better without having to, you know, be on 10 different medications. I mean, my dad has a lot of medical problems. He's on probably 30 different medications. And I think, you know, 20 years ago, all he had really had to do at that time was really make significant lifestyle and diet changes. And so I think that is something that I'm, I'm, constantly learning about now is, um, you know, all the things that you can do to, to more in a preventative way to, to help people overall with their health and wellness and well-being. We're talking to Michelle Dang. She's an anesthesiologist and an integrative pain management specialist. Um, she's also a podcaster at the Wish Well podcast. Can you tell my audience a little bit about your podcast? Sure. So this is something a little bit outside of just my interventional pain management background. So with my background in integrative medicine, I started this uh, Wish Well podcast, which is a women's integrative summit on health and wellness. And initially it was started to um, bring to the audience uh, different speakers related to women's health and wellness. And the whole idea was we were putting together a conference and it was supposed to be our inaugural conference in Houston, Texas in May, which of course the pandemic happened. And so that um, had to be postponed, which we have no idea at this time when we feel comfortable with putting it on. So in the meantime, I started this podcast just to kind of feature women and their health and wellness journeys. And so I called it the Wish Well, just because you know, it was cute. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the whole idea was to wish women health and wellness. And so I started featuring women who come on sharing their personal health and wellness journeys. And a lot of the people, the women who come on are physicians, but I do have people in my circle who are yoga instructors and, um, and who are in the fitness community. And so I just feature their stories. And so uh, I started doing that right before the pandemic, probably a few weeks before this all kind of started. So it was in March and I really enjoyed, and Kevin, you and I talked about, you know, the, the joy of, of putting together a podcast. And so it's a, a steep learning curve. It's been a lot of fun and I put on weekly episodes, but I've also started uh, recording segments where I discuss a little bit about um, little stories, my personal stories. Like I think one, one uh, podcast episode I recorded, a solo episode I recorded on different cooking gadgets that I love to use and I love cooking. And so it all kind of uh, is related to integrative medicine. And uh, so, yeah, so it's the Wish Well uh, podcast and uh, my Instagram page is wishwell.health and it is available on all the platforms. And my final question, what's your take-home message for the Kevin MD audience? Yeah, so I thought about this and my take-home message is actually to get moving. And I've, I've 
I like that phrase because moving is more than just a physical type of um, type of thing. It also is a mental thing too. And I think looking back on the article that I wrote for you for the Kevin MD blog, um, I was I was feeling a little bit stuck and a little burnt out, and I wasn't able to move beyond that at that point. And so I think changing my mind mindset helped me to get moving out of that stuck and burnt out feeling. And also, you know, get moving means physically moving too. And I think it's important during this pandemic. Um, and you know, my husband and I actually just talked about this earlier, how much stress we feel with just not being able to move in the way that we're used to moving, like going running when it's like a hundred degrees in Houston. Um, and when he's used to going to the gym and me, I'm used to going to work out at the studio. So just finding alternatives, um, in order for us to get moving and get our, our, you know, our juices flowing, our blood flowing. I think that's really important. And how can people reach you? So my personal website is michelledangmd.com. And I, I am pretty active on social media. On Facebook, it's also Michelle Dang MD. And um, on Instagram, I post a lot. And it's Michelle Dang MD. So that's kind of my, my name everywhere. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you for joining me on the show. Thank you so much, Kevin. Mm-hmm.